In today's note, we're going to be representing quadratic relations. So this is going to be looking at the actual equations for quadratic relations and gathering important information from them. So this is going to have to require us to refer back to factoring, um, as well as uh, the last note where we looked at representing quadra or uh, interpreting quadratic relations. So there are two forms of a quadratic relation that we're going to look at. We have seen these already, although we may not have actually formally identified them. So the standard form of a quadratic relation is an, is it a, a, an equation in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we've seen this before in two spots, one in factoring simple trinomials or factoring x squared plus bx plus c. And in the last note, where we looked at the quadratic regression using Desmos. The factored form of a quadratic relation is y equals a x minus r times x minus s. And we've seen this when we've had to factor the simple trinomials or factoring in general. Right? We usually got uh, a, a re answer or a result that was two brackets that were multiplied. So we have seen these before, but now we know that one is the standard form and one is the factored form. And each form gives us something important in terms of a quadratic. It gives us important information, so that's why it's important to know these two forms. The first important piece of information is the x-intercept. The x-intercept or the zeros or the roots. All three mean the same thing. It's when the when the graph crosses the x-axis. So the to determine the x-intercepts or the zeros of a parabola, we have to write the equation in factored form. So we have to know how to factor. And the x-intercepts or the zeros are just our r and our s value. But to keep in mind, so again, it's just the two numbers that are in the brackets but it's the opposite of what we see. So again, it's the opposite of those two numbers in the brackets. And it needs to be in factored form. The y-intercept, to determine the y-intercept of a parabola, we need to write the equation in standard form. So the y equals a x squared plus bx plus c. And then the y-intercept is just the c value. So whatever the c-value is, that's our y-intercept. And finally, for c, the vertex, so this is the other piece of information. The vertex, again, remember the vertex is the highest or lowest point. To determine the vertex of a parabola, we need to determine the x-intercepts, or we need to find the x-intercepts. So we need to go to factored form. The x-coordinate of the vertex, so let's actually just put, this is fa from factored form. The x-coordinate of the vertex is x equals r plus s divided by 2, or basically it's the middle of the x-intercepts. And the y-coordinate of the vertex this long equation, basically all it means is basically just sub the x value into the equation and solve for y. Basically that's all that means. Plug it into the equation and solve for y. Two things to note, if a is positive, then the parabola opens up and the parabola has a minimum value. So what that means is if the parabola opens up, it looks something like this. This is our opening. The opening of the parabola or the mouth is facing up and the minimum value would be down here or the vertex. So this would be our minimum. So that's what it means when A is positive when a is negative, the parabola opens down, and we have a maximum value. So if it opens down, again, the mouth is facing down, something like this. 
So we see that the mouth faces down and we have a maximum at the top. In example one, we're going to need to determine the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and the maximum or minimum value of the parabola. So again, x-intercepts, remember we need to get it from factored form. The y-intercept, we need to get it from standard form. And the maximum or minimum value comes from the x-intercepts. So let's look first at the x-intercepts. So this form here, this is not factored, this is in standard form. So what I need to do is I need to factor this. So if I have y equals x squared minus 2x minus 15, I need to factor this. Because it's a simple trinomial, I need to find two numbers that add to negative 2 and two numbers that multiply to negative 15. And if I go through that puzzle, or if I think about all the numbers that work, I should get that it's negative 5 and positive 3. Negative 5 times positive 3 is negative 15. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. So once I find those two numbers, the factored form is y equals x minus 5 and x plus 3. So that's my factored form. So what I have to do now for my x-intercepts, my x-intercepts are actually the opposite of these two numbers. So the x-intercepts are actually 5 and 0. Because again, remember x-intercepts, it's on the x-axis, so the y value is 0. And the other x-intercept would be negative 3 and 0. So those are our two x-intercepts, the opposite of what we found in our puzzle. The y-intercept, remember the y-intercept is just the c value, or it comes from the equation. So the y-intercept is just negative 15. The vertex is it a minimum or maximum value? Well, we know that it is going to be a minimum value because the a, because a is positive and the parabola opens up. If we want to find what that actual value is, we need to find the middle of our x-intercepts. So the middle of the x-intercepts so we have 5 plus negative 3 divide by 2 to find the middle. So the middle of these two points is 1. Or you could think of a number line if I have negative 3 here and I have 5 here. Where is the middle? Well, it happens to be at 1. So if I take this value and plug it back in, so y equals... 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 15. So just going back to the initial equation. So 1 minus 2 minus 15. And I get y equals negative 1, negative 16. So that means that my vertex is this point, or this value and this value. So the vertex is 1, negative 16. So again, this was, these were just the steps that we had to go through um, that we mentioned previously. For B, B, again, same idea. We want to find our x-intercepts and our y-intercepts. This one's going to be a little bit trickier, but the first thing we have to do, because again, remember, this is in standard form, we want to factor this. So if I want to factor this, first I can't just go right to the product and sum because there is a number in front of the x squared, but I can common factor this. So I'm going to take a common factor out of negative 3. So I get x squared minus, or sorry, plus 8x 
minus 9. And if I want to factor this, I can factor inside the brackets. So I'm looking for two numbers that add to 8, but the same two numbers have to multiply to negative 9. And when I go through and I look for the numbers, I should get is positive 9 and negative 1. 9 times negative 1 is negative 9. 9 plus negative 1 is 8. So those are my two numbers. And when I enter it into factored form, y equals negative 3. I have my two brackets. x is the first number. And then I have plus 9 and minus 1. Again, remember, the x-intercepts are the opposite. So that means my x-intercepts are actually, let's see, just keep it color-coded, so I just want to make sure. So use green. My x-intercepts are actually going to be the opposite of what we see. So instead of positive 9, it's negative 9. And instead of negative 1, it is positive 1. And zero. So those are my x-intercepts. The y-intercept, remember the y-intercept is the c-value, so in this case the y-intercept is 27. So again, just straightforward. And the vertex, is it a maximum or minimum value? Well, I have to look at the a-value. And the a-value, if I look back up here, the A value is negative, so that means I'm going to have a maximum because it's going to open down. Again, if I want to figure out what that value actually is, I need to find the middle of my x-intercepts. So negative 9 plus 1 divided by 2, which is negative 4. Again, I can think of a number line, negative 9 all the way to positive 1. Negative 4 is in the middle. I need to take this value and plug it into the equation. So y equals negative 3 times negative 4 squared minus 24 times negative 4 plus 27. And I'm just going to, so all I did was I just substituted negative 4 into the equation. You could do it into either one, actually, it wouldn't matter. And now I'm just going to solve. And I get, should get y equals 75. So that means my vertex has a point of negative 4, which is the x, or the middle value, and then negative 4, 75, which I just found. Again, it has a maximum value because the a is negative, so that means that the parabola opens down. So that means it opens down like this. And we know what that maximum value is. It's negative 475. Finally, if we're looking at another example, more of a word problem, the length of a rectangle is 36 minus x, and the width is x. What is the maximum area of the rectangle? And determine the dimensions of the rectangle in part a. So this is going to be a little a little bit tricky, but we can go through it as long as we follow those steps. So if I want to figure out the area, remember area is equal to length times width. So area is equal to, in this case, 36 minus x times x. And if I want to go through, I can actually go through and expand this. A equals 36x minus x squared. Or if I rearrange it to get it into the right form, negative x squared plus 36x. Let's move this off to the side. So if I want to find the maximum area, that means I need to find the vertex because the vertex will give me my maximum. or So in this case, I need to factor this. So the first step, I'm going to factor. So I need to common factor first, so I'm going to take out 
the negative or the negative 1 and I get x squared minus 36x. I'm going to put in the plus 0 just to help us because there's nothing there. Now what I'm going to do is I want to find two values. that add to negative 36, but they multiply to 0. So in this case, it should be fairly straightforward. It's just negative 36 and 0, and negative 36 times 0 is 0. So when I factor this, a equals negative 1 x minus 36 and I'm just going to put x I'm going to put plus 0 anyways as a placeholder just to see it so that is my factored form so that means my x-intercepts are the opposite so 36 and 0 and just 0 and 0. So those are my two x-intercepts. So the second part is I need to find the middle value. So if I add those two together, so 36 plus 0 divided by 2 equals 18. So that's the middle x value. And then finally the last part, sub into the equation so if I have, I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning one just because it's going to be easier. So if I have a is equal to negative 18 squared plus 36 times 18, I get a final value or a is equal to Three hundred and twenty-four. So that means the maximum area, or basically what I just found, was I found my vertex. So I found my vertex to be eighteen three hundred twenty-four. So that means the maximum area is the three hundred twenty-four. The width is the x or the eighteen. So that means the maximum area. I'll write it over here so therefore maximum area is 324 and finally for B if I wanted to find the actual dimensions of this specific rectangle I know the dimensions are 36 minus X let's say is the length and the width I know is just X I know the specific X value I know X has to equal 18 for this rectangle for the maximum area. So that means that when I do for the length, 36 minus 18 equals 18, and the width is just equal to x, which just equals 18. So that means my dimensions of this rectangle are actually a square. So it's 18 by 18, which gives me the largest or maximum area. And if we were to graph that, we could see that here. Right, so that again, that's another thing you could do. Once you come up with the actual equation, you can just graph it, um, and then you can see where the maximum is. So the vertex is here, and it was at 18, 324. Again, we can see where how this was in the middle of our two x-intercepts, which we did find here as well. So a long note. But again, hopefully you're able to, again, at least look at one equation and figure out how we're able to find all the key pieces of information from it.